Today, I'm going to discuss the law of sines, law of cosines, and law of tangents. Each is used to find side or angle measurements of a triangle given other side or angle measurements. They apply to any type of triangle, so they become especially useful when you aren't working with right triangles. In each case, I'll use an arbitrary triangle with side A, B, and C, and angles A, B, and C, where a side and its opposite angle are represented by the same letter. I'll start with law of sines. Law of sines states that the sine of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B. We can prove this by looking at the area of the triangle. First, let's draw a line perpendicular to side B to the vertex at angle B. From this, we can find the area by taking the sine of angle A times side C for the height, and multiplying that by side B for the base times one half. We can follow a similar procedure for another side vertex pair. In my case, I drew the other line from side C to the vertex at angle C, which gave me the sine of angle B times A times C times one half. Since the area of the triangle is constant, we can set these two equal to each other. This allows us to cancel out the side C and one half, leaving us with sine of A times B equal to the sine of B times A. Dividing both sides by A and B, we see that we get our law of sines. Keep in mind that since psi A and B were arbitrarily defined, the law of sines works for all sides of the triangle. Using another triangle, which is obtuse in this case, we will look at law of cosines. Law of cosines states that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of angle c. This is really just an expansion of Pythagorean's formula, so it shouldn't be too surprising that we're going to use that to prove law of cosines. First, I'm going to expand side b by a length x, so we have a right triangle, with c as the hypotenuse and a height which I will label y. From this, we can write that c squared is equal to y squared plus b plus x squared. I'm going to expand the b plus x squared right away, which will give us x squared plus 2 times x times b plus b squared, and then plus the y squared equal to c squared. I would also like to point out that there is another right triangle with side lengths x and y and hypotenuse a. From this, we can write that a squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. I'm also going to point out this angle here, which is equal to 180 degrees, minus angle C. We can use this to show that the cosine of 180 minus angle C times A is equal to X. Now we are ready to start setting things equal to each other. We can take the X squared plus Y squared here and replace that with A squared from this equation. We can also replace the X with a times the cosine of 180 minus angle c. Regarding the equation, we can see that we are pretty close to the law of cosines. The only issue is this 180 minus angle c. Well, a property of cosines, and you can check this for yourself with a calculator, is that the cosine of 180 minus an angle is equal to the negative cosine of that angle. So, making that last correction, we can see that we get the law of cosines. Again, like law of sines, the choice of angle and sides was mostly arbitrary, so law of cosines applies to any appropriate 
angle side matchup. Lastly, we will look at law of tangents, which states that side A minus side B over side A plus side B is equal to the tangent of one half times angle A minus angle B over the tangent of one half times angle A plus angle B. To prove this, we will use law of sines, which, for the purposes of this proof, we will set equal to some variable d. Thus, we can separate each into d equals sine of angle A over side A, and d equals sine of angle B over side B. Rearranging these, we have side A equals d times the sine of angle A, and side B equals d times the sine of angle B. Taking side A minus side B over side A plus side B, as in the first part of the law of tangents, we see that this equals d times the sine of angle A minus d times the sine of angle B over d times the sine of angle A plus d times the sine of angle B. Since there is a d in every term, all the d's cancel. Next, we'll use the sum to product formula, which states that the sine of angle A plus or minus the sine of angle B is equal to 2 times the sine of angle A plus or minus sine of angle B over 2 times the cosine of angle A minus or plus the angle B over 2. Setting the top and bottom equal to the appropriate version of the sum to product formula, we get 2 times the sine of 1 half times angle A minus angle B times the cosine of 1 half times angle A plus angle B all over 2 times the cosine of 1 half times angle A minus angle B times the sine of 1 half times angle A plus angle B. If we remember that tangent equals sine over cosine, we can simplify this. First off, the 2's cancel, but we can also get the tangent of 1 half angle A minus angle B over the tangent of 1 half times angle A plus angle B. From this, we can see the law of tangents. Like I mentioned earlier with law of sines and law of cosines, the choice of angle side pair was arbitrary, so law of tangents applies to all angle side pairs in a triangle. Furthermore, while I used an acute angle for this example, law of tangents applies to any type of triangle with any angle distribution, and the same is true for law of sines and law of cosines. But, nevertheless, hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something, and see ya!